Hi everyone, this is Stephen Fu, um, the founder of Teraxa, and uh, this is our Blockchain 101 series. So, during um, a lot of our AMAs and a lot of our meetups, we often get asked this question, which is, does your application need a blockchain, right? Do you actually need a blockchain, or is it just, you know, some fake, trumped up, uh, non-needed version of uh, just leveraging a blockchain just for having a coin? Um, and this is this is a very common question because so many you know there are still unfortunately so many scams uh, within within the blockchain ecosystem. So users have uh, users and community members and investors have all gotten very used to asking the question: Is there actually need absolutely need a blockchain? Does your application need a blockchain? Does it need a token? Right. So here I think we we really want to address this issue. Right. What what does it mean? How do you answer that question? Or how do you even Think about that question, right? So the first point that we want to make is, well, you never absolutely need anything. You almost never absolutely need anything, right? Because almost everything in the world has an alternative substitute. So an example of something you absolutely do need, maybe, you know, uh, for a person, you absolutely do need oxygen and water. Um, and there's just, there's just no substitute for those things, right? Um, maybe for water, but oxygen, there's no substitute. Um, so that's, those are very rare. Those are very, exam very rare examples of things you absolutely need because there's simply no substitutes. For almost everything else, right, um, we talked about, well, if the pain point or if the need is actually real, then the world would have provided some sort of solution for it already, right? So the question is, do you absolutely, absolutely need blockchain? Well, the answer is typically no, but then you don't really absolutely need, need anything really in the world, right? Except for a few things like oxygen. So, you know, just to give an example, right? So for example, the, when automobiles first came into the market in you know, the late 1800s, for example, um, today it's a no brainer, right? Of course, having cars is great. It's a great innovation. And, uh, and it's obviously better than uh, horses or other animal drawn carriages, modes of transportation. But in the late 1980s or late 19, uh, sorry, in the late 1800s, you know, that's not really obvious to people, right? Um, well, first of all, cars were not really that great. They weren't that great back then. They were driving very slowly, you know, 10 to 20 miles per hour, whereas a horse can easily run 30 miles an hour. They're noisy, you know, lots of, lots of smoke, uh, people didn't like them, it, not a great alternative, not a great substitute for a horse. Um, so the performance was very, very poor. The product was too new. Um, second, there was no ecosystem for it, right? So all the roads were designed for horses and maybe oxen or whatever, for animals, basically. They were not really designed for automobiles and for cars. So cars didn't really drive that well on, on roads that were not designed for them. There weren't a lot of ecosystem uh, to support the cars in terms of there weren't gas stations everywhere uh, that you could get. You could only get gas at specific places that were very inconvenient. And there were a lot, not a lot of automotive mechanics, right? So it was very difficult and expensive to get the car maintained. Whereas a lot of systems existed for animals and horses, right? You can get an animal fed probably at a lot more locations than you could uh, to fill up your car. You can probably get uh, find a vet a lot more easily to uh, to uh, to fix up your horse than a car mechanic to fix your car. So the, the product is very new. It was not very well performing and there was no ecosystem to support it. So those are all really good reasons. So for you to say, hey, a car kind of is not a great product, right? And I don't need a car. If you're in the late 1800s, I think a normal, typical, rational person would be crazy if you say, I absolutely need a car. Well, you don't. You don't need a car, right? It's a stupid, bad product at that time because new, no ecosystem. Well, that's sort of where blockchain is right now, right? It's new, not so great, performance not great, lots of flaws with it, and there's really no ecosystem around it, right? So there are lots of reasons why you would say you don't need a blockchain, and in almost all cases, you don't really need a blockchain or anything, really, and especially anything that's new. So we need to be a little bit more lenient when we think about do you absolutely need anything and keep in mind that you don't absolutely need anything really in this world. 
The second thing is that this idea of pain point, right? So pain point is really a spectrum, right? So when you think about whether or not something is absolutely necessary, you got to think about, well, am I solving an itch or am I solving a pain, right? And a lot of times that's, you know, it's not exactly obvious what you're doing. And, and it is a spectrum in that in certain scenarios, uh, it's an itch and in other scenarios, it becomes a pain. And you have to recognize where to specifically deploy your solution, right? Um, so as an example, uh, for example, I mean, we were um, working with this asset leasing company from Japan and they were leasing these arcade machines. And they have this very innovative profit sharing model in which they share however much the machine was earning with their customers. Um, it's a great model. It worked very well in Japan. Um, because um, people, they had long-term relationships and the customers largely told them the truth, right? There were some discrepancies, operational like dis dis discrepancies, but the problem of not reaching an agreement uh, around how much each asset was earning is really a small itch while they were operating in the Japanese market. Now, as soon as they got out of Japan, um, they saw an amazing amount of demand, right? in uh, East Asia, Southeast Asia, um, uh, in, in, you know, even Europe and in the US for their products. Um, but they had a very, very critical problem because now they don't have that well-established relationship and trust built up for all these new customers that were remote, that didn't speak Japanese, um, that you know they were culturally perhaps incompatible in a lot of business practices. And, um, and now that itch has become a lot more painful, right? So maybe deploying a blockchain integrated solution to enforce the machine's uh, state and to add trust into machine generated data, that was not really necessary. It's not really needed, right? It's not a pain point while they were operating in Japan, but it became a pain point when they got out of Japan, right? So you have to be very, very selective on exactly where you're actually applying this and making sure that you're actually solving a pain and not solving an itch. People typically don't pay a lot for solving an itch, right? So, and the last part is, you know, once you discover your pain point, it's very, very simple. Are you adding value? Is your solution adding value significantly above its cost? If you are, that's great. That's a great solution. You have successfully deployed a technology into a solution, solving a pain point, and you're adding significant value above the cost. So that's all you really need to know when you're asking yourself the question, um, you know, do you need a blockchain, right? Number one, don't get stuck on this absolutely, absolutely need something. You almost never need anything in this world, right? Make sure you're solving a pain point and not an itch and make sure you're adding value well above the cost that you're incurring. And that's all you really need to know to be able to deploy and answer successfully answering this question, do, does this, problem require a blockchain enabled solution. Okay, thank you very much.